Behold my stuff. Was that, was that good or was that cheesy? <laughs> Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, The Talking Ball Cloud. Today we're doing a video that I often find to be important. Uh, it's something that I feel I have, out of all the things I talk about here on the channel, the most knowledge because I've done it the most in my life and existence. But we're going over EDCs. And one reason I really like to go over EDCs is because for the average gun owner, the average civilian such as myself, what you do a lot of every day is carry a gun. You also carry things on your person, and I like talking about the whys behind we carry stuff and kind of things that I've learned, and maybe I can pass off something as someone who's been carrying a gun for a while now every day to someone who's just starting or just learning or, or just taking that first step on their journey of everyday carry, which is very exciting, but it's also very scary. I've talked to people that want to start carrying a gun, and they're like, oh, I don't know about this or this, so this video kind of exists for that, and I can pass on knowledge of what I've learned and hopefully can help you out to some capacity. If not, if you're a pro and you already carry every day, then go on to watch something more <laughs> enjoyable than this. But if you're someone that's looking to learn and get dialed in for your kit, then feel free to do that. I also have other videos on this topic. It's something that I'd like to come back and revisit. Uh, let's go shoot something. Let's run through some drills. We'll do a little one R, like three. So essentially messing with the grip of the handgun, doing a reload, and then it, that essentially can break the handgun grip, so. scary when you put a hot gun in your pants. Like both physically hot and metaphorically firearms hot. Just joking about. All right, cool. All right, let's talk about this setup. I'm rocking a Glock 19. This is gonna be a Gen 5 Glock 19. Got an Aimpoint Acro, Surefire X300. This is my go-to setup. Got a Jaeger Works slide release because um, I am someone who rides the gun high and I have caused uh, the gun not to walk to the rear when it's empty because I was riding that gun so damn high. Laser Works gonna be done by Area 15, local gun shop here, shout out to them. They also did the Cerakote to make it look like this grayish color. So really dig it. And wait, did I say Jaeger work slide cut? I'm not sure if I did, but now that I did. Okay. Now the holster setup, I was running for that particular course of fire. I got an LAS Glock 19 holster, and it's got the side caddy spare mag. So recently got this. I've been running a ton of different holsters and setups for a while now, ever since starting the YouTube channel, which I wouldn't recommend to the person that doesn't have a YouTube channel and isn't a dancing monkey such as myself. But for someone that likes to try different setups, I kind of do this just so I can regurgitate what I've learned. Now, full disclaimer, LAS is gonna be the sponsor of this video, so big thank you to them. There's gonna be a link to the description down below to go check them out. I've met the owner, I like the guy, but how does the stuff stack up? So far, so good. Uh, again, I'll grant them. He uses LAS products, so you know if he's using it, it's gonna be good. So don't trust me on this a dude on the internet who wears the ball of clava. So take everything I do and say here with a grain of salt. And if it sounds good, maybe use it. If not, yeah, then I warned you. Ladies and gentlemen, another sponsor of this video is going to be the Sonoran Desert Institute. They are a college dedicated to squaring away your dreams of becoming a gunsmith so you can go to school to work on guns, which is very American and very cool. You get to go to Thanksgiving and when your family asks, hey, what have you been up to at school? You say, oh, playing with guns and all your weird liberal family members can get weirded out by that. So head on over there, follow the link, check them out. Let them know that I sent you. I also have some other holsters. I have traditional arms holsters. I got these guys, they send some holsters to me. I really like these guys. And of course I got my T-Rex arms holster. Um, T-Rex arms back in the day, they sent me their new sidecar holster. So um, you can kind of see a difference. This is on a hinge, their newer one, as opposed to say a bungee from LAS. 
so you kind of compare and contrast. Now, I gave away most of my T-Rex Arms holsters because they sent me like six, so I gave most of them away to my Patreon, but I kept the attachments for doing YouTube video stuff. And of course, everyone's favorite attachment, the uh, the, the, the incog rifle mag. <laughs> I don't know. Lucas, what's up with this, dude? But uh, we'll talk about that down the road. So that's what we're working with holster-wise. I also got an HSP incog holster that I've been using. So, um, And then the one outlier, or the two outliers, which would be a leather holster for the Walther uh, PPKS, and then this CYA holster for the HKUSP. Now... Which gun should administrative results shoot next? So what is Door the Explorer? Hey, you know what? Let's do a little, uh, let's do a little HK, or sorry, let's do a little Walther PPKS. All right, gun is hot, safety's on. We'll go ahead and put this leather holster in my pants. Okay, let's go shooter. The name's Bond. Admin results, Bond. All right, I can't keep up the facade. All right, so I had seven rounds there, doing a little 380 action. <laughs> it's not the most, this thing kicks like a donkey for the size that it is, and it rides the back strap of my hand rather nicely, so. All right, let's go talk about it. All right, now, so I picked this gun up at the gun store. I walked in, I had the option of snagging this or something else, and I saw this, and I was like, I always wanted a James Gunn. <laughs> I've always wanted a James Bond gun, so I went ahead and snagged the Walter. The trigger, of course, when the hammer's all the way rear is very nice. Go figure, it's that Walter engineering. But the gun does recoil like a mofo, and I do find myself how I ride the gun with it up high, that I do find the recoil to kick my butt, even though it's a 380. Crazy, right? Um, of course, you want to shoot it with both hands. I was just memeing James Bond, so take that with a grain of salt. Now, um, the, the holster, it's weird going from say conventional kydex to rocking a leather holster that is weird um, it does feel kind of unsafe but luckily this is a double action gun with a safety so you have that level of okay i can feel good about that and not know that i'm going to blow uh, a hole through my nuts so x factors about having a different handgun caliber is of course you run into logistics now the nice thing about this gun is that it's very comfy to wear it's classy it's elegant um, you know, it's, it's one of those guns to where it's like, okay, cool, I'm going to a cocktail party, I'm going to a wedding, you can put it in the shoulder holster up here, you can wear it on your waistband down here, and it's very comfy, and you actually do forget about it, of course, it's all steel frame and everything like that, you do start to run into like, okay, this is kind of heavy, but for the size, um, reholstering with a leather holster does suck, so once you essentially pull it out, you can see my belly, but once you pull it out, <laughs> uh, you have to like finesse it in. So it's like running drills like your, you know, Lucas Botkin on the flat range of your handgun is going to be annoying for reholstering, but that's not the, not the idea, right? So this leather holster is going to be a Vega holster. I snagged it from Amazon for like 20 to 30 bucks. I can link in the description down below, classic YouTube jargon, right? Now, of course, adding a handgun to your armory, such as a Walther PPKS, you have different mags, now you have different ammunition because you're running 380. Now, if you were someone that had a, a Glock 42 already, it may not be a big issue, but um, this is the things to consider, right? You know, it's like you're adding more stuff to your inventory, nothing wrong with that, but uh, weird X factors, of course, getting to gun guy stuff. Moving on. Let's touch on to the HK USP Compact. You, of course, I, I have a video on this already as in standalone video where we do the whole Blood Diamond. I mean, we're in the same shirt where we do the whole Blood Diamond charade. Um, I've carried this gun before. It's nice to carry because like when you carry a Glock, you're always like, ooh, this gun pointed right at my nuts and there's nothing between me and the Almighty. So with an HK, you have the safety and the hammer. So that's kind of nice, but I can't shoot this gun good to save my life. I can shoot it like passable up close, but when I start pushing it like a Glock, I'm like awful with it. So that might just be a training curve. But of course, we'll go shoot it. She is hot trot, ready to rock. She also has a decocker, so if you want to put her down, you can. But we'll run it from hammer up in the pants. I 
don't think I'm stellar with the gun, but I think it's passable. But uh, let's go talk about the setup real quick. The downside with uh, HK USP Compact that I found is, well, it's old style, old world, right? There's no integrated rail, so throwing a Surefire X300 on the gun, you're gonna need an aftermarket part, which I got the GG and G rail, which I can throw on there and I can attach a light to it. Now that downside is, I don't really have a good holster setup for that. <laughs> so um, I don't really have a light bearing hole, so that works the HK USB compact, which is the downside because I like having weapon lights on most of my guns, right? So COA holster comes into play. It's done a great placeholder. It's relatively affordable. Just a piece of Kydex, nothing too crazy, right? Um, carried this for a bit, especially leading up to the USB compact video, but it's, yeah, it's a, it's a German handgun, right? Known for high quality, it's gonna be pretty much almost invincible based off of the other USPs that we see, and it's not too bad. Grantham just released the full-size USP video on his uh, channel, so you can go, of course, go watch that, and we can go over that. Now, let's get to the Glock 43X. All right, I got my self-defense ammo in here. Don't wanna shoot that because that ammo is expensive. So we're in the traditional arms holster. Let's do a LAS holster. Ooh, check that out. Exquisite. Look at the lines, the pink, the splintarn. My God, it even has a watermark. Okay, Give me a little caddy. So we'll do a shield arms mag and then we'll do just a regular Glock 10 round mag. Look at the shield arms offset. And then Real quick, this, eh, well, we'll go shoot first. Shooting's more interesting. <sighs> so, one thing you just notice is that with the Glock, uh, 43X standard mag is that it hung up when I went to release the mag as opposed to say when the shield arms mag came out or comes out easier, right? Let's see. Boop. Boop. And it's getting stuck in there. Now, things to consider. I have an aftermarket mag release in there for the aluminum mags. That is the shield arms mags. So run of the shield arms mags is great, but you're gonna want an aftermarket part for your Glock, which people often start to get worried about. But to me, I haven't had an issue yet with the shield arms mags. So I really do like them. 15 rounds in a 43X subcompact platform. To me, that's pretty exciting. As opposed to say a standard 10, okay? And what I got on this gun is I got going a, a TLR7 sub with a Sig Sauer red dot. Um, is it the best red dot for this platform? Of course not. I wish there was a closed emitter micro red dot on the market, but uh, alas, I don't think there is. I wish Aimpoint would make one. I think I've talked about it before. I think that'd be really cool, but uh, luckily most of the time everything's covered up and I shouldn't be getting too dirty, say, as opposed to a duty grade gun where it's gonna be outside of my holster or outside of waistband say an outside the waistband holster. So much word salad, so little shooting. And of course we have the administrative results. <sighs> Cover up my serial numbers. Got the administrative results logo on that mug. Thanks to Area 15 doing a little a laser work. Go check them out for all your laser work needs. Big fan of the 43X now. One reason I have a variety of handguns, um, ideally in a perfect world, I would just have my Glock 19 with spare parts and if something broke, I could swap it out and I'd just be proficient and a pro on one platform. Now, for me personally, why I have multiple handguns is of course, I have a YouTube channel where I like to show off different guns, but I also live in Arizona and Arizona is nice right now to where it's passable weather. This is filmed in like February and it's passable weather being outside. It's enjoyable, it's nice, but in a few months, it's gonna get really hot. It's gonna get really muggy, sweaty, very dry. It's gonna be like living in an, uh, an oven and so one thing I like to do is switch up having a lighter type firearm on my person. I'll be having less clothes on me. I'll be wearing less uh, supporting gear. You know what I mean? So I like having that option because it gets hot. So a 43X as opposed to say a 19, uh, it's a comfortability thing for me personally. Now, 
that's not the best way to go about it, but that's where we live, okay? That's what I'm dealing with. When you're, when you're trying to carry a gun in like 100 plus degree temperatures, and you don't spend a lot of time outside, but when you are outside for longer than like five minutes, you're like, ooh, this gun just got really uncomfortable. So it's weird things I think about, weird little nuance, X factors, if you're someone who also lives in a hot state. All right, so that pretty much covers my firearm setups that I worked with and have actually carried on my person. Um, I think the most time with any gun that I have is going to be with a 19. The next one is going to be with a 43X. Leagues and bounds. I've only ever really carried the Walther and the HK. Um, it's very sparse, so I don't have a crazy amount of time behind it. Real quick, I want to say uh, ammo we're using is going to be from Badlands Munitions. They hooked it up with a 9mm, so I want to give them a quick shout out and say thank you. It's very cool that they were willing to be like, hey man, um, we like your channel. Here's some ammo. Go shoot. So a big thank you to them. I'm going to go ahead and shout them out because one, they're a local Arizona company, and two, I like them. So... I'm gonna put a link in the description down below for those guys. Check them out. Also, who was out here and this happened to your AK dust cover? <laughs> who was this? Which one of you was this? Okay. All right, now, so let's move on to some of the supporting gear that I carry on me um, that I, of course, have with me every day. Um, of course, a shameless plug for Mountainside Fitness, but I got my truck keys. And my supporting miscellaneous key has got the Magpul like DACA wallet, I want to say it is. Really nice slim line wallet. Um, I'm not a big fat leather wallet guy. That shit bugs me until no end. This being nice and slim is much more enjoyable for me. And then one thing that I like to carry, and I've talked about it in every EDC video so far, but AirPods. AirPods are great because, say if I'm listening to a podcast um, you know, I have Bluetooth on my truck, but say if I'm listening to a podcast, I have already ear, earphones in, right? And you can call people and talk to people, which is great for like business and networking and being an entrepreneur. I hate that. But um, what it also allows you to do is say if you're up on to an accident or emergency situation where you need to talk to 911, you already have a line of communication in that's hands free. Now, I love this because if you're trying to talk on the phone and like gunfight or render aid medically, one hand is out, <laughs> right? I mean, you could take your iPhone, put it on speaker and say you had a front pocket like this, but that's all dependent on your clothing. This is already in your ears. You can toss it in, you can talk. You only need one of them technically. So if one got bumped out, you can keep going and talking. And you can just notify, uh, you know, emergency medical law enforcement, what's going on and you can keep your fighting hand tools free, right? So I really like AirPods for that reason. And um, this really applies to civilians, um, law enforcement, military guys, this doesn't really apply to you. It is for, you know, me being out and about. And I come across an accident, I can say, hey, this is what's going on, this guy has this kind of, you, you start listening out all the stuff, where you are, what kind of vehicles, what kind of collision, you know, are these airbags deployed? Okay, cool, let, let the first responders know. Okay, hey, this guy's bleeding now, I have a tourniquet, I complied to him. Um, and all that stuff makes you a better citizen and can help out your fellow man a little bit better as opposed to trying to help out and also be on the phone, right? So, fun little nuanced details. I, I get really passionate about that because it really does, you know, force multiply yourself for good. So, one important thing that I also like to carry on me is a flashlight. Now, I typically carry this in my back left pocket so I can have it and grab it and I can pull it out and say, hey, what's going on, all right? So I can point it at a potential threat, and it's also nice to have a flashlight so when it gets dark. It gets dark every day of your life. So that's a nice little option. It also could be daytime, and you need to go into a dark situation, right? You need to go into a dark building or something like that. A good handheld light is an excellent supporter of that. I like to do the Mod Light body with the Mod Light OKW head. It has a really good throw, and it helps throw off someone's OODA loop that could be a bad guy. You have to think, I can't immediately escalate to a use of force with my handgun if I'm feeling nervous, right? If I'm in the parking lot with a missus and some dude's just walking right at me being sketchy, I can't just be like, hmm, handgun, right? Guess what? You just committed a deadly or aggravated assault with a deadly weapon. And if they wanted to press charges on you, they have a case. It could have been just some hobo coming to ask you for some money and bam, you pretty much assaulted him with a loaded firearm. 
You don't wanna do that. What you can do is take your handgun, or sorry, take your handheld light and be ready to go. And you say, hey, what's going on, crazy guy? And he'll, it could correct his behavior, right? Well, it will bring his intentions to light because one, he's been seen. Two, he now knows that you're not a soft target because you've addressed him, right? Like psychologically dealing with people, um, showing them that you're not a soft target may negate any sort of criminal behavior they have towards you. So that's something you can do, right? And then of course, if he keeps continuing with his behavior of being aggressive, now you know, right? He's shown his card. So it's really good to have a handheld light. This could be considered overkill as far as like using it around the house or using it to work on stuff for actual light purposes. But I'd rather have a, a, a light that I can use defensively um, and then also as a tool, right? Yeah, it's a little bit of overkill as far as output, but it gets the job done. And I can integrate this light head with say a Surefire dual fuel or other mod light bodies uh, for throwing it on weapons. I can take my old dual fuel head and throw it on here and take this OKW head, swap it. Right, okay, so you get the idea. There's a lot of scalable options here. Now, weapon light out of the way, very important thing you wanna have on your person. Next thing is gonna be a pocket knife. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Now, one thing every, Usually people carry pocket knives before they start carrying handguns. It says pocket knives are a synonymous thing. I'm not crazy on having a huge beefy pocket knife. Um, I'm not trying to like get into knife fights with people. One that's terrifying to I carry a gun. <laughs> so I'm not trying to like knife fight my way through, <laughs> through this life. Um, but one thing I like my knives to do is just be handy and useful, right? Be able to open cans, be able to open uh, beer bottles and stuff like that. It makes me more useful at parties when you're out there and like, oh, I need a can opener, or I need a bottle opener. You can be, hey, here we go, Boop, pop it open real quick. This one has a nice flat edge for being able to screw flat head stuff, so it makes it a little more useful. I have another Kershaw knife that has like Phillips head and flats head, uh, you know, bottle opener. And a lot of, there's a lot more knives you can use like a Leatherman and stuff that are much more useful. I like that to be the case with my knives. Now, of course, if you do want to be more uh, John Wick-esque, you can always get a fixed blade. And I did carry a fixed blade on my person for a bit. This is gonna be like a Solar Dynamics fixed blade. It's really cool, got a fun little Rhodesian pattern. So if you wanted to, you take it, throw it in the waistband, and you have a you have a fixed blade on you. The only downside is it's like it's just kind of like very extra. You know what I mean? If you only carry this as opposed to no pocket knife, you have to like lift up your waistband and pull out a knife, and you could run the risk of like showing off your gun. It's just like a it's an extra level and an extra. It, it's just like very to me. It's it's like kind of over the top. I'm not looking to knife fight my way through it. This is very much an aggressive, stabby tool. Now, of course, I may say that and like. I'm gonna die because I didn't have a proper knife on me one day, but who knows? So this is one thing I used to do. I don't really do it as much anymore. Uh, medical, of course, is gonna be a much bigger deal to have on your person than anything else, I'd say. Uh, statistically speaking, you're much more likely to come across, say, a car accident or you know some sort of medical emergency where someone got hurt and you need to render aid to the best of your ability before first responders get there. Now, uh, this is a Riker nylon gear ankle IFAC. Of course, the thing's missing is gonna be the rest of the, the uh, IFAC, like the chest seal, the gauze and stuff like that. Got the, uh, got some shears and I got a tourniquet in here. And this is just an illustration to show that um, I've got some time behind it where an ankle carry from wearing pants, but of course, when summer does roll around, it's like I wear pants a lot less. I still wear something, just not pants as much. And that's just an illustration of that. You know, can you take your medical gear combined with your AirPods and now you're a much more well-rounded individual. You can start helping your fellow man much better as opposed to just being a, a gunfighter, right? Where all you have is a handgun and you can't help out someone in a medical emergency. So that covers a good amount of stuff. That's like most of, of my everyday gear. I'm trying to think if I'm missing anything else. Of course, got my Ray-Bans. Uh, I like having some sunglasses where I look cool and feel cool. Um, one thing I like to try and work in is like a notebook of some kind. You know, you're gonna need a pen too. So this is a Pilot G2 or a G2 pen. Yeah. And then Eberly Stock at SHOT Show gave me this cool little notebook. So I really dig it. Um, I like working stuff in like that. This is a real quick thank you to them, you know. But it's I like writing down ideas on the fly I have for videos. Of course, my originality with another EDC video isn't that creative, but it's something I like to do. So, um, 
just things, right? Things, things, things. Phone keys, wallet. Not, it, of course, when you start carrying more stuff, you're always like, do I have everything? So I know some guys that go crazy and they carry a bunch of stuff on their waistline. Uh, you know, Unity Clutch Belt is a good one you can have for scaling up and maintaining a low viz. But I am very passionate about everyday carry because it's something that you do like literally every day, especially as a civilian, you know what I mean? Law enforcement guys, they're experts carrying a duty belt and handling uh, interpersonal conflicts. It's usually their conflicts are like one-on-one -on -one to, you know, say they're a squad of guys handling with a crazy person that could be met out, right? And military guys, they don't really worry about handguns as much, I'd say, as opposed to being gunfighters with their rifles um, where they do most of the work, right? As a civilian, you know, you're worried about crime. That's your biggest threat. So, well, your biggest threat is government overreach and being tyrannical, but that's going down another rabbit hole completely. In a, in a normal civilized society, your biggest threat is crime. So being cognizant, having good situational awareness is going to take you the furthest, right? Not always being on your phone at the gas station with your head buried down, not looking around, especially say if you're in a sketchier part of town, always keeping your eyes up, looking at your nearest threat, what could be you know, potentially a threat. One thing criminals love, you gotta keep in mind is criminals, bad guys, they like to keep their hands hidden. They like to have, you know, say a nice J-frame pistol, which you can shoot through clothing without having a malfunction. So just because you don't see the threat doesn't mean it's not there, right? Yeah, like I said, very passionate about this topic. I love the idea of guys taking the leap, getting all the equipment set up, because it's not just the handgun that you buy, that's the initial financial investment. It's ammunition, it's your holster, it's your spare mags, it's your lights, it's your red dots. It's making you a more well-rounded uh, shooter, right? Make it a more well-rounded tactical individual, okay? So that's one thing I'm very passionate about. If I could pass off any of this knowledge, hopefully this helped to some shape or form or extent. Um, hopefully this encourages you if you were already on the fence of carrying something every day. Um, I know my guys overseas that aren't allowed, they don't have their God-given rights of carrying a gun. Um, you know, hey, a, a knife and a flashlight may be the best route you can go. Right? Maybe some pepper spray, you can get creative. Um, a lot of, like say in the UK, a big threat they have is people stabbing each other, which is terrifying. I'd hate to get shanked to death. That's why I carry a freaking gun so I can hopefully win that fight or maybe get stabbed a little and then I can shoot my way out. But it's neither here nor there. So you have to think of the threats that you're going to face. In America, it's like most likely a bad guy's going to have a gun too. So you're going to want to have your training squared away. You're going to want to have your situational awareness squared away and you're going to want to be on top of your game. I think I've had a jumbled word salad, so probably close out. We'll do a little bit more shooting. And if you want to support the channel in any way, shape, or form, Patreon is an excellent way to support the channel as well as merchandise. It helps out the channel. As always, gentlemen, stay easy, stay breezy. I will catch you all on the flip. I realize I maybe made this target a little bit too short, but for. I don't know, maybe it's an angry midget that I'm having to defend myself from. Stop, Tyrion Lannister! Dude, red dots on handguns just make everything so much better. Oop, you suck. Ugh. Stupid fucking butt. Oh my god, he's so funny and edgy.